Hey there, my name is Charles, and in this course, I'm gonna teach you how to use Unity Input and how to enable multiple controllers in your game. More specifically, I'm gonna show you how to accomplish this using Unity's new input system, which is currently in preview and slated for release in Unity 2019.1. Over the course of just a few short videos, we'll be using this simple project to explore each aspect of the new input system. First, we'll migrate the code from using the old input method. Then, we'll build on our implementation in subsequent videos to provide a more robust solution that supports multiple controllers. If you'd like to follow along, then head on over to my Patreon page where you can download the project free of charge. Now, just a quick disclaimer. For this tutorial, I'll be using Unity 2018.3.5 Feature 1 and the 0.1.2 preview version of the Unity input system package. And while I think that a lot of the high-level concepts will remain the same, it's highly possible that some aspects of this tutorial will change over the course of the next year or so. But don't worry, if you run into any issues, just check the comments to see if I or anyone in the community has posted a solution. Or feel free to hop onto our public Discord server We've got a great community that's always willing to help. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's get to know our tutorial project a little better before we jump into the migration. The main scene consists of a simple environment and the player game object that we'll be controlling via script. The player consists of a rigid body, a capsule collider, an animator, and our player script. Let's go ahead and open that up in the code editor now. For simplicity's sake, I've placed most of the code into regions so we can focus on the meat of this mono behavior, the fixed update method. The first thing it does is set a boolean on the player game object's animator that toggles its running animation. Is moving is one of a few calculated properties that are utilized throughout this method. When it's true, the function proceeds to update the transform's position and rotation using the direction and rotation properties which are also calculated. Let's expand this region down here and examine just how these fields are calculated. IsMoving compares the direction vector to vector zero to determine whether or not the player game object should be moving during this frame. Direction uses the horizontal and vertical properties to determine the direction in which the player game object should be moving. And Rotation calculates a rotation quaternion for the player game object using the rotation direction property, which also leverages direction. One thing that each of these calculated properties has in common is that, one way or another, they all depend on the vertical and horizontal properties, which are populated using the old input method. This is our point of entry, the code that we'll need to change in order to migrate to the new input system. I've left the starting implementation fairly simple, so we have room to grow throughout this course. We'll be taking an iterative approach. So in this tutorial, all we're going to do is install the new input system and migrate our existing input logic to consume WASD input from the keyboard. Why don't we go ahead and do that now? Back in Unity, open up the Package Manager by clicking Window and then Package Manager. At the time of recording this Unity tutorial, the input system package is still in preview. So we'll need to enable preview packages. Click Advanced, and then Show Preview Packages. Now, you should be able to locate the input system package in the package list. Select it, and click Install. After a moment, the package will be installed, and you'll be prompted with a dialog warning you that the new input system is not enabled. If you click Yes, then it'll be enabled for you, and Unity will be restarted. Nine times out of ten, you'll want to click Yes. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to click No, so I can demonstrate how to enable the new input system manually. Enabling the input system is very easy. All you need to do is open up the Project Settings by clicking Edit, and then Project Settings. Then select Player from the Settings list and update the Active Input Handling option. Set it to Input System and click Apply. At this point, Unity will automatically restart. When it comes back, your project will be ready to take advantage of Unity's new input system. 
Let's switch back to the player script in our code editor and update the code. All right, so we'll be taking an iterative approach here. I want to start using the new input system as quickly as possible. So at first, we're just going to focus on reading WASD input from the keyboard. Warning, the code you're about to write is going to be quick and dirty, but it'll get the job done. And we'll be replacing it very soon with a more robust implementation, so don't worry. The first thing we need to do is import the new input system API. As of the recording of this tutorial, it lives inside of the Unity Engine dot experimental dot input namespace. So let's go ahead and import that into our script. Now we can work on updating these calculated input properties. Let's start with the vertical property. We're going to need some more room for our new input logic. So the first thing we need to do is convert this expression into a statement body. Then introduce a variable for this hard coded return value so it's easier to work with. We can just call it vertical. Great. Now, with the new input system, you can access each controller type via static classes and use them to read specific input values. That's exactly what we're going to do with the keyboard. Create a local variable called keyboard and initialize it by calling keyboard.current. This static keyboard class is part of the new input API that we imported from the unity engine.experimental.input namespace. Again, this is quick and dirty code, and you normally wouldn't use the new input system API in this way, except maybe for one-offs or special cases. Just keep that in mind. Let's get rid of this old input logic and just initialize the value of the vertical variable to zero. To set it, we'll want to check both the W and S keys to determine whether or not they've been pressed. We can do this by calling keyboard dot w key dot is pressed and keyboard dot s key dot is pressed in an if else statement and then set the value to one or negative one respectively. Yikes, it sure ain't pretty by my standards, but if we switch back to Unity, press play, we can see that it works just fine. I guess it's good to know that you still have access to individual input devices at such a low level if you need it. Let's pop back into the code editor and copy our implementation for the horizontal property. This time, we'll check whether or not the D and A keys have been pressed. Perfect. Now, back in Unity, Hit play. Beautiful. I think this is a good stopping point for now. It's enough to get us started and a good base for the next few tutorials, where we'll begin to explore some of the more key features of Unity's new input system. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like and a comment letting me know what you thought. And for more Unity tutorials just like this one, don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you to all of my patrons, and a special shout out to NZ, Richard Stance, Sean Carey, Thomas, Willendingo, and Yagov.